Aerospace Engineers. In this video I'll be talking about the changes, updates, and bug fixes to Phil's ship diagnostics as of July 8th, 2016. First, I would like to introduce the new Diagnostic Reports feature. This feature gives you a quick summary of your ship's total health. The report is broken up into different sections. Thrusters, gyros, weapons, systems, and hull. Your gyroscopic health indicates what percentage of your gyroscopes are currently working. Your weapon health indicates what percentage of your armaments are working. This includes Gatling turrets, Gatling guns, missile launchers, and missile turrets. Your thruster health indicates what percentage of your thrusters are working properly. This includes hydrogen, atmospheric, and ion thrusters. Your system's health is an overview of all of the functional blocks on your ship. So any lights, terminals, thrusters, gyros, weapons, etc., including reactors, will show here. I intend to make a reactor health section, but that did not make it into this version. Your hull health is an indication of all the blocks on your ship, including armor blocks. When this reaches zero, your ship is gone. In addition to the diagnostic reports feature, I have also improved the program's ability to distinguish when blocks are damaged or not. All terminal blocks should show up as yellow more quickly when they become damaged, and should revert to green when they are repaired. That's about it for new features, but now I'd like to talk about some of the advanced features we haven't been able to cover in the previous videos. This includes performance tweaking, as well as changing the look and feel of the output of the script. Let's start with the look and feel of the script, and then we'll finish up with performance tweaks. There are three ways you can edit the script to change how everything looks. First, is by changing the render slowness property, which is near the top of the script. What this does is it changes the animation speed of the scanning images. If you make this number higher, it will animate more slowly. If you make this number lower, it will animate much more quickly. The smallest this number can be is zero. The next thing you can change is an integer called border width. What this is is an area of blank space around the edge of your ship. The default currently is two, but if you increase this, there will be more blank space around the edges of your ship when you render it. The lowest this number can be one. If you set it to zero, you may encounter some errors. The final thing, and this may be a little bit more difficult to change, are the pixel values. So below border width, there should be a section called pixels that has a character for gone, normal, none, hacked, broken, shadow, and cursor. These all correspond to special colored characters in the Space Engineer's font. Changing any of these characters will change what character is displayed when any block is in that status. That about sums it up for the cosmetic changes. Now let's get into the performance tweaks. Below all those settings, you'll find three variables that will impact performance. Max renders per tick, max updates per tick, and max terminal status checks per tick. Changing any of these values will drastically change the performance of the script. For those of you who are using this script on very large ships, this could help you increase your performance significantly. The program is separated into three logical sections, rendering, updating, and terminal block status checking. These numbers indicate the maximum amount of time the program can dedicate to any one particular part. In general, it's good to leave these at default values, but if you're having performance issues, you can lower the values. I highly recommend lowering the values proportionally to each other. So if the values are initially 100, 100, and 25, you would lower them to 50, 50, and 12. It's important to note that the lower these numbers are, the longer it will take for your ship to initialize and update but it should be possible to get simulation speeds that are very close to 1.0 if you adjust these properly. For extremely large ships, you will have to compromise at some point, either for speed or performance. In the near future, I plan to make the initialization process independent of these variables. That way, if you set the parameters very low, you can still have good runtime performance without having to wait a significant amount of time for your ship to initialize. On that same note, for very large ships, the script can take some time to initialize. If you set the parameters for performance very low, you can sometimes expect to wait up to one minute for the ship to finish initializing. I have tested this script myself on a large ship with 11,000 blocks, and the initialization process with normal parameters takes about 7 seconds. You will always see decreased performance during this segment of the script. Please be patient while it finishes. 
That's it for this video. Please feel free to check out the script on the Steam Workshop, and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Thanks for watching.